This is Julia Wing. I play Anna Wu in Czech. And you're listening to Tech This is a Podcast. Hi, my name is Graham Jones, but you can call me Gray. This is my show. It's about Chuck. It's filled with interviews, the latest news, crazy co-hosts, and spoilers that'll make your day. Oh, wait, wait, I need to go back. I host these TV nights. They used to be pretty boring, but everything changed when I found NBC's new show, Chuck. Pretty soon, my TV night got pretty crowded. Guys I didn't even know were showing up the door. Big important guys. Really scary, nasty, get killed for hosting them guys. Next thing I know, these super episodes are downloaded into my brain. Which means every moment of my life, I'm thinking about Chuck. ChuckTV.net sent their top people to protect me. That's Mel and Liz. They're pretty zany. They co-host with me now as a cover. So now I must welcome you to Chuck vs. the Podcast. The number one TV podcast for NBC's Chuck. This is great. This is Mel. And this is Liz. And we want to welcome you to Chuck vs. the Podcast, episode 31, for Friday, November 13th, 2009. Today's podcast is a special interactive Q&A episode featuring answers to fan questions from us and Julia Ling. And before we get to the questions, we have some news to cover. We have some big news this time. NBC has ordered six additional episodes of Chuck for season three which brings the total count up to 19 for season three and we've had a lot of questions about what that means for um the the storyline itself and you know we talked with phil clammer in our last podcast and he we posited the question you know what if you get additional episodes and at that point he said that um you know additional episodes they just may be treated as a mini season after the current 13 episode arc so it and it depended a lot on the you know the timing of when the order was made and all all kinds of things so you know i will have to wait and see how it happens but we do know that they've already got nine episodes in the can and start production on the 10th this week so it'll be uh we're not sure what kind of an impact that additional episodes will have other than making us happy to have them and also having those extra episodes uh speculation is that this means we'll see chuck on the air in january with a break for the Olympics, but NBC is not confirming anything other than the March start date at this point. So we'll just have to wait and see what they decide to do there. But hooray, six additional episodes. Mm, that's awesome. Hopefully they do come back in January. If not, though, more exciting news would be that the DVDs for season two will be available January 5th. So that's pretty exciting. Everybody's been waiting for that, too. In addition to all 22 season two episodes, the sixth disc set, or four discs if you're buying Blu-ray, includes the following bonus features. Truth, Spies, and Regular Guys, Exploring the Mythology of Chuck. Dude in Distress, Exploring Some of This Season's Best Action Sequences. Chuck vs. the web Webisodes, Web-Originated Mini Featurettes. Chuck, A Real-Life Captain Awesome's Tips for Being Awesome. John Casey Presents, So You Want to Be a Deadly Spy. Declassified <laughs> scenes and my personal favorite, the gag reel. I love the titles. <laughs> oh yeah, of course the UK has this already, um, and we've seen a few of the portions leaked. It looks like a really, really good DVD, and it should be noted, obviously, that the first season DVD was only thirteen episodes, and this is twenty-two. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a lot more content on the season two DVD or Blu-ray. And it sounds like the extras are going to be phenomenal. I'm really looking forward to John Casey's guide to how to become a deadly spy. Yeah. I think I'll take in notes. You know? Yeah. And really, really exciting. Um, I don't know if you caught the premiere of V, but it yes. looks like a great show. And mm -hmm. it's going to get even greater because Chuck, executive mm -hmm. producer and writer Scott Rosenbaum, has signed a two-year deal with Warner Brothers. Congratulations on that. It, it's uh, reported to be a seven-figure deal, and that's not uh, including the decimal point. Um, and, <laughs> and that's because he's been given the reins to the updated V series on ABC. That means he's showrunning the show. He's the creative head honcho. Um, production on the new episodes resumes in January, and so it's assumed that he's going to continue with Chuck at least until... The first 13 episodes are finished. I'm so excited about that because I I think that he is obviously incredibly talented. But, he, you know, for Chucksters, he's got our flavor in mind. Yes. And if he can bring that to V, that's awesome. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does with it because I really, I enjoyed the season premiere, but I have heard that the next couple of episodes maybe aren't quite up to what ABC wanted up to their standards. So I think bringing uh, Skeeter in is a really good idea that he's going to really help with that. Yeah. Get it, keep it on track. And I should mention that he, he tweeted about it and he specifically tweeted that you've got to be patient and wait for at least the fourth, fifth episode. Because he said that they're going to spin it in a whole new direction and it's just going to get into second gear. And so mm-hmm. I really urge everybody to to stick with it, at least until you see uh, what Scott Rosenbaum does with, with the show. And other interesting news, Zachary Levi directed episode 309, Check versus the Beard, um, last week. And judging by all the photos and Twitter comments coming from the set, it was a good experience all the way around. We have photos from the set, plus news about a guest star for that episode posted at checktv.net. And I would just like to point out that we posted that before Michael Asialo at EW.com posted his quote-unquote red-hot check scoop with that, that same information. Just putting that out there. We were first. <laughs> well, we know if you want red hot Chuck scoops, you go to ChuckTV.net. That's right. Exactly. And breaking news is that thanks to your nominations, Chuck versus the podcast has been nominated for a podcast award. Now, this is totally separate from the uh, monthly rankings at Podcast Alley. This is a totally separate website called podcastawards.com. And every year they run a contest. Uh, where they open it up globally to to nominate in various categories and then vote on everybody's favorite podcast in, in a bunch of categories. And so um, Chuck versus the podcast has been nominated in the entertainment category, and the voting actually starts today, November 13th. So uh, it's very, very important that you uh, please support us in this. And it's important to be clear that this is daily voting from November 13th through November 30th. So if you can, if you have daily websites that you check, if you could please uh, bookmark podcastawards.com and vote there every day for us, it would help tremendously. Just to give an idea of the scope of this, more than 361,000 people took part in the nomination process and nominated over 3,500 podcasts. And so it it gives you an idea of what we're up against in this competition. And just because we've been uh, getting votes at Podcast Alley doesn't mean we automatically get them in, w- with this contest. And you know the way this works. The the frenetic fanatic people um, who who uh, vote every day really 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 will skew um, certain podcasts. And so we got to make sure that we we fight well up against this competition so please 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 if you could vote for us every day from november 13th through november 30th that would be great and now it's time to call the multi-talented butt-kicking possibly secret agent julia ling Hey, Julia, how you doing? It's Gray here with Mel and Liz. Hi, Gray, how are you? Doing great. And Mel and Liz. Hi, Hi, everyone. Long time. I'm so excited. Yeah, so are we. Me too. So where are you now? I am sitting at this beautiful, um, in front of this beautiful Ritz Carlton in Dallas. And it's so pretty here. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What's the weather like down there? Beautiful. How are you guys? Uh, doing great. Very fine. Very fine. It's really nice here, too. You mentioned that it's beautiful where you are. And for a change here in the Midwest, it's the same way. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. You guys have developed your stuff so much. I mean, I've been keeping up with your website and everything. Mm-hmm. We're really excited about uh, the additional episode order and uh, the possibility oh, yes, of the yeah. show coming back a little earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah. and we're really loving these interactive podcasts. It's, it's really neat. It's a little harder on our end to keep track of everything, but we have questions that pop in <laughs> on Twitter and we have other ones that come up in the email and and uh and people feel a little little more interactive um which is really really cool. 
how awesome is Twitter? <laughs> right? It's very and cool. Facebook and yeah. yeah, and all that stuff that you know you could just get so much more interaction. I love it. Yeah. Oh, and and on that note, do you have a Twitter handle that that you want people to? Uh, follow? I do not do Twitter, um, just my name, Julia Ling, but um, I'm still bad at updating it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I totally don't mind people following it. It is me. Great. Well, I'm sure yeah. you'll get a whole bunch of those in the next couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So um, the one question that did come in, and, and I know we had, had mentioned that we had sort of an embargo on season three questions, but is there anything that you can say about season three? I don't know. <laughs> There's so much that I wish I knew. Um, you know, even when I was pretty, you know, much more on the show, um, I still didn't know. It was always like a script by script basis. So um, I had just heard that they said that and we will be back, um, but I haven't I haven't heard that, and I just don't know when or how, and I don't know exactly know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but I stay in touch with my friends um, on the show, and um, everyone there seems to be having a great time. Um, everyone says it's a blast, and it seems like things are, you know, they're they're so comfortable with creating now that it sounds like there's a lot of exciting things that are coming up, and there's got to be, because, you know, the episode picked up, so I'm so excited to watch <laughs> the show and see what all they have in store, yeah. and I'm really curious what Adam's, what Adam was going to be doing. Yeah. Well, uh, outside of Chuck, uh, what have you been up to since season two wrapped? Um, well, right now I'm in Dallas. I'm filming a new show um, for ABC Fox called The Deep End. Um, and uh, I've got this scene with Clancy Brown, which is really funny. I just, just watched Shawshank Redemption last week, and he was in the movie. And then here he is right in front of me. <laughs> wow. Um, it's really good stuff. And um, working on some stuff. We're going to film some stuff for uh, Germany TV. And when I get back into LA, mm-hmm. and um, also I'm going to work on the uh, the attack of the show for G4. That's going to be really fun. It's it's all oh, all geek, <laughs> yeah. all geek, all gaming. Um, you know, right along my alley of Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to be playing D and D on the show. Um, I think that airs December 29th. Um, just, you know, having a great time, just um, cooking a lot, learning how to cook. <laughs> and a lot of dancing mm-hmm. and singing, uh, writing my own songs. So hopefully we'll have something recorded by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. And uh, I, I noticed on IMDb uh, a couple of films, Cinder and Lovesick Diaries, uh, High School and Dead Reckoning as well. Um, uh, th- those are all things that you've done pretty recently? Yeah, there, there are a lot of that, you know, indie films here and there that I worked on in the past, and then they just kind of, popped up (laughs) i totally forgot they existed but high school is a really awesome movie um that one is that one is coming out next um next year i think 10 stoner movie starring michael chiklis from the shield and adrian brody and Mm -hmm. some pretty pretty awesome people um and that was really fun to shoot Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, so i can't wait to see that very cool did, did we talk about that before high school? Mm. I think you and I maybe chatted about it a little bit via email. Julia, this is Mel. I think when I was uh, I was asking you, um, oh, there, that uh, magazine from England wanted to get in touch with you. And I think you had mentioned uh, it in that email. So, yes. but not in an official interview. Well, yeah. high school <laughs> is so fun to because sh- <laughs> we went over to Michigan and it was my first time learning what, you know, living with snowstorms was like. <laughs> um, well, it was welcome so to the Midwest. <laughs> yes. It was crazy. They gave me a um, a, uh, a rental car, and they gave me the keys to it. And they said, oh, your, your car is parked somewhere in the parking lot, you know, outside the hotel, and here's your keys. And then the next morning I go out, and every single car is covered under, like, 30 inches of snow. So I had no idea where my car was, what it looked like, where it was parked. So the first, like, literally first day I was in Michigan, I was cold, freezing, and, like, slowly crawling around the entire, like, 
parking lot looking under cars to see, you know, pressing my clicker to see if there was like a, any lights that would go off, trying to find my, <laughs> uh, <laughs> learn to shovel, <laughs> I learned to shovel snow off of my car, and it was great. We were we shot um, this scene that was kind of like a summer spring scene, and it, it looked sunny, and the snow hadn't come in yet for this scene. Um, and so I was in kind of like short sleeves, and it was really cold. And then in the scene, I get in a car accident, and there's ice cream that gets splattered on my face. I just remember the prop guy. <laughs> I just remember the prop guy coming up to me, and he's just like, "Julia, don't worry. We're just gonna have to apply this ice cream on your face once because it's just not gonna melt off your face." <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think it was like um, I don't know, twelve degrees or well below freezing. But it was oh, such God. a wow. blast. <laughs> well, how how in general do you find the the experience? with indie films because you've done quite a few indie films compared to say higher budget tv shows or or that kind of thing that you do indie films definitely take a lot more passion and teamwork it seems i mean i guess all projects take take a lot of teamwork but but indie films are just i think it just takes um a lot of love and passion and people have to really want to make it happen because there's not a lot of the same kind of resources that you get you know versus like say if you you were on a studio feature or a show, um, and so everyone's just got to really really um, put everything 100% into it to make it work. Um, and oftentimes because of this or such passion, um, a lot of really cool discoveries get made. And I can't really explain that, but on an artistic level, I really see a lot more um, you know creativity kind of things get discovered along the journey like during shooting actually mm -hmm. so um so moving on to i guess we could start the uh, the twitter and email questions uh mel do you want to uh, take one of them from the list sure let me ask the, the one from aardvark because um i have to apologize to him because last time i called him a, a she so mia culpa on that one <laughs> but he wanted to know <laughs> I, I called him a, a she. I didn't realize that Aardvark was a he because, oh, I'm going to get oh. get email about this. Because he he wrote a guest article for us on uh, a Czech TV.net about the Chuck and Sarah relationship that was so uh, well thought out and rational that I just assumed it was <laughs> female. <laughs> <laughs> so, my fault. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, Art Park said, um, yeah, back in season two in Chuck versus the breakup, Anna ended up fighting Mitt, Michael Strand, in the cage. And then Casey, witnessing her abilities, makes a call, presumably to the NSA, asking for a background check and hinting at possible recruitment. So his question is, do you think this was a throwaway line or has there ever been any indication from the production staff that this was meant to lead to something more? You know, I think it could totally go both ways, and this is why I think the writers are so brilliant because they leave so many things kind of, you know, unanswered, kind of, but in a good way. And um, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I feel like it's a throwaway line. I, I honestly feel like it's a throwaway line. Um, but just the, the the idea that you know um, there there's a little dream going on. Um, there. I mean, it was really funny. It was really funny that Casey actually said that, and I think it was it was part of the comedic um, timing, you know, between him and Chuck that just made that so funny. Um, mm -hmm. But that would be so awesome if Anna's like off in Hawaii, just like training, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who knows? That's... Yeah, but it leaves so much to explore, and I love it. That's one of the favorite theories among Chuck fans is that Anna is off in you know her doing her fledging fledgling nsa training under Casey casey and sarah but she has to keep it a secret from morgan speaking of training yeah. i have to share this i am so freaking excited there's two things i've always wanted to do in my life and one is one of those kind of police futuristic simulators where you get to go in and like mm -hmm. you know literally shoot bad guys under like a kind of like a great big video game you mm -hmm. know scene um mm -hmm. and 
LAPD has invited me to do that because um, when awesome. I get back in from Dallas, they have um, they're presenting their um, annual sports awards, and they've asked me to present the awards for them. And in exchange, they're offering for me to play in this great big simulator, and um, it's like a dream come true for me. So I'm going to get training, you know, officer orders. I'm going to get to go to the gun range and um, just learn how to dodge and shoot and, you know, do all that great stuff in the simulator. So that's awesome. And the second thing is I've always wanted to do a military obstacle course, Mm -hmm. and that's going to happen, too, in December at Camp Pendleton. So fingers crossed. Wow. (laughs) So in real life, I'm actually really, yeah, I'm actually really so stoked, and um, it does bring back a lot of Anna Wu memories. (laughs) Very cool. But who knows? She's probably in Hawaii doing that. Probably. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and, and actually, that leads to uh, I know you spoke quite a bit uh, in our previous interview, uh, Mel's previous interview with you about your martial arts training, but we've we've still continued to get more questions about it. And um, Sherry, uh, in particular, asks. Though you didn't work much with Yvonne in Season 2, did you two ever get to practice Kung Fu or martial arts together? In particularly the the stunt preparation, were you ever preparing stunts together with uh, with Yvonne? Not Yvonne, not together, but we were together when we both practiced for our own stunts. And so we kind of watched each other do it and had a great mutual respect and admiration for each other. I love Yvonne. I mean, we were both dancers. We had, we both have dance backgrounds. And, um, you know, so we took things, and she's just amazing. I mean, she's so flexible and talented. And so it's fun watching her in action. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> cool. And, uh, and Philippa asks, um, she she's done two years of Taekwondo, and she loves Tai Chi. Uh, she mentions it's like a deadly ballet, um, and she's wondering if you could speak in particular about the disciplines that you've studied, the ver- the various ones. Yeah, I've studied some kung fu, the animal styles, um, and most of that's the Shaolin stuff, which is re- pretty intense. Um, you have to, you know, train extreme strength and extreme flexibility. And then I switched over to Wushu, which is a lot more flashy, and I did the staff and the straight sword. Um, wanted to learn some trisectionals and nunchuck type things. Um, and then we never got into that because then we started working on the fan, which is like this old, I learned this actually learning the fan was uh, way back in China a long time ago. The government didn't want the civilians to learn martial arts because they thought that the civilians would overthrow the government. Wow. So these guys wanted to protect themselves so they would pretend that they were just dancing. and But then every move um, is actually a deadly move. Right? If you can really take someone down. And the sound that they used looked really, you know, elegant and beautiful. But it was actually made out of steel. So, and, and that the, when you... In the fan, it becomes like a great big blade and could just slice one open. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started just working with that. Um, and I've got this... Um, I'm working on that, putting that together. And then I just kind of switched over to uh, ballet dancing and stuff. And there's a lot of Tai Chi background there. And she's, she's absolutely right about that. Um, and I think it's, it's really changed a lot of the way I um, do things athletically because it really trains you how to breathe differently and mm-hmm. channel your energy um, differently. I can't explain it either, but it's a really amazing experience. Uh, tai Chi is. Very cool. And and how much has um has your professional work in uh, in TV opened up uh, opportunities for that? I know I know you spoke about uh, the Jackie Chan disciples, um and uh, uh, and that kind of thing. But have you have you had much of a need for your stunt work outside of Chuck, or is or is this the the biggest place that you've used it? Well, it definitely helps. And, you know, I love action and I love martial arts and I love dancing. So my dreams are to do action movies. And um, it, it definitely helps. Like when I worked on my um, the video game, Command and Conquer, Red Alert 3, or Uprising, it was um, 
I played this kind of girl with telepathic powers, and during the photo shoot, there was a lot of kind of very martial artsy poses, and you, you had to, you know, you were just moving, posing, moving, posing while they were shooting you, um, and and I, could, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't trained in martial arts, and um, it was it was definitely helpful. Um, and I don't know if it was because of my background that they wanted me to play this character, but but it definitely was helpful. Mm -hmm. Mel, uh, Sherry's got a question about uh, dance. Do you want to take that one? Um, what is your favorite style of dance, and would you ever want to be on a Dancing with the Stars type show? I would love to be on that show. <laughs> I am <laughs> currently learning new stuff. Um, I actually, in the last couple of years, just got into belly dancing, pole dancing, and salsa. But all my life I've grown up doing the Chinese folk dancing. There's a lot of um, ribbon, umbrella, a lot of props. I mean, it's so beautiful, very fairy-like, ethereal stuff, extremely graceful and just my favorite thing to do in the world. And then I started doing some ballet, and there's a lot of jazz, modern. Um, I learned some tap dancing, um, ballroom, mm -hmm. waltz. So I love dancing. <laughs> I've never done swing, mm -hmm. but I think I would really love to be swung around by some really hot guy. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and swing just seems to be a really fun style of dance. Yeah. It really does. Definitely. If they asked me to be on like one of those dancing shows, yeah, in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Especially Put the, the word out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, in in our last interview with you, you you spoke about how um, there weren't really a lot of uh, practical jokes on the set, but uh, that was I think over a year ago. So since then. Um, have you noticed more of that kind of thing on the set or any funny stories you can tell us from behind the scenes? Did you guys find any? Because I know you also like talk to the other members, right? Because I'm, I'm dying to know what, you because know, I usually hang out with the buy more <laughs> set. And um, so I don't know, like, I don't, I don't really go to the location shoots where they have like the main, the, the Chuck, um, the, the more dramatic action stuff. And so I'm just dying to know if they play pranks on each other there. <laughs> I haven't heard of any actual pranks, but the impression I get is just that it's more goofiness. Like just people kind of goofing off. Yeah. I don't know. I, are we really that boring? <laughs> 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 yeah, there's there's a lot of singing and dancing that goes on between the takes is what it sounds like to us. Yeah, I figured we'd be a lot more evil, but I guess not. I mean, <laughs> I guess we're just That's all what happens nerds. when you're on a show we're, with nice people. We're just all nerds after all. We're we're just nice, sweet, musical nerds that just dance and sing and play Guitar Hero or Rock Band. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> So, uh, so other than um, VR simulations and military simulations happening in the next couple of months, what's what's on the agenda for you? Looking into two thousand and ten. Oh, um, yeah, I haven't planned that far ahead. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, I'm pretty good till December, and I think the first thing that that when this year ends is, I think I would really like to take a vacation. <laughs> mm -hmm. It works so hard no. this year. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah i think you deserve a vacation <laughs> yeah yeah i know this show um the one that i'm working at right now the deep end it starts airing sometime next year. sometime around april is what i've heard but they don't have an actual air date i'm really excited because it seems like such a wonderful show mm -hmm. um and my role is really intense it's total opposite of buy more um you know i play a pregnant, extremely pregnant girl from China, terrible accent. Her fiance is all American and he um, he gets killed in the war and she's getting deported and she's fighting for her child to have, um, you know, to get born in America. So it's extremely, very oh, wow. emotionally draining. Yeah. Um, and it just, and they, everyone on the cast is great. You know, my scenes are with Matt Long and Clancy Brown. Um, and it's a great set. It was kind of a Studio 60 reunion for me, too, because Timothy Busfield is directing again, and he, he was, you know, a regular as well as a director on Studio 60. Um, so it's just, I'm so happy to be here and work with such great people here as well. Great. Well, that does sound interesting. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that's all the questions we have from Twitter and email. Um, Mel and Liz, do you have any other other questions? Mm, no. Just uh, next time you're in the Midwest, give a shout out. We'll show you around Chicago. Yeah. Oh, you're in Chicago. I am, yeah. I thought you were like in Massachusetts or something for some reason. I, no, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't tell by my Chicago accent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've always wanted to go to Chicago. Well, awesome. if you're in Toronto you can come uh see the town here and uh and then if you're if in you're Kansas, in small town Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. For some I reason you find uh, yourself in Kansas. Wow, so we're just kind of like covering all the bases here on this phone call. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Gotta love the internet, I right? Love yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, you guys are so wonderful. Cool. So do you have any projects uh, or other activities, charities that you would like to promote? Not at the moment. Writing some books and I'm producing a documentary. Um, and not wow. at the moment. My my album is not not together yet. Um, I feel like everything will be next year. Um, and there will be a good time to really share that. But I don't really want to say anything yet until it's at the, the proper place. Well, definitely let us know. Yeah, it sounds like you've yeah. got a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I already wrote... Yeah, I, I, wrote, I finished writing two songs, and we're going to record the first one fairly soon, hopefully. And then um, I've got this idea for this music video. So I don't know. There's so much exciting stuff going on, but it's all in the making right now. Cool. cool. You're yeah. like the busiest woman I know. <laughs> just, um, just, you always amaze work. me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, you guys are so amazing, too. And then I just found out a little bit about Gray. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Yeah. I love Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I really, I really hope to come out and, and meet you guys. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be yeah. awesome. Very cool. <laughs> well, we won't take any more of your time. Um, and thanks so much for uh, talking with us. It's always, always, always a pleasure. Oh, thank thanks, you Julia. So much. All right, take care. Talk soon. Okay. Take care, Julia. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. I love asking her what she's doing because oh, yeah. she has like 15 different things. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if she's like, like next time we ask her, she's like, well, I'm uh, designing a clothing line and opening a restaurant and, <laughs> yeah. you know, climbing Mount Everest. I mean, yeah. she's just. <laughs> it's just now, if she were to go on Dancing with the Stars, I would watch. Oh, She'd yeah. nail it. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It depends on if it's on opposite Chuck. <clears throat> well, that's true. But, um... That's true. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. She'd, she'd probably win that. So uh, we want to thank everybody for submitting your questions by Twitter and email. And so moving right along, we're, we're going to close out the show. We do want to remind everybody that we've got an email list that I do send out as often as I can uh, with reminders about uh, voting and new podcast releases. Uh, we want to remind everybody, especially with the Christmas and Hanukkah buying season coming up, that uh, if you want to buy Chuck-themed items, please do so through Chuckazon. You can get uh, any Chuck items from Amazon um, on our Chuckazon site, and it and it gives us a little bit of a kickback, uh, as well as a great gift for Chucksters would be uh, Chuck TV or uh, Chuck vs. Podcast merchandise, which you can get uh, through either of our sites. And, of course, remember to check out Chuck. That's our um, little campaign we're running to donate season one on dvd to your local library or if your local library already has one you know check around in uh surrounding communities and see if maybe they could use a copy of season one on dvd uh that's check out chuck and you can find more information about that on chucktv.net mm -hmm. and we want to remind you to check out our sponsors we're of course um sponsored in part by movie morons podcast and by SyrianJunkies.de. So you can see the links on ChuckPodcast.com on the right-hand side. Uh, please check them out. Uh, they're both great sources for info. The Movie Morons podcast is a great sort of quirky look at films and, and filmness. And Syrian Junkies is a, the hugest, I, I think it's the biggest uh, German TV website. Yeah, I believe so. They're enormous. 
and and it's a great site. I I only read a little German, but what I've read, it looks really cool. So check out our sponsors, and uh, that helps us too. And if you don't want to hear any spoilers, now's the time for us to wish you a farewell. We do have um, more cool stuff coming up on future podcast episodes, but so make sure to subscribe or at least bookmark chuckpodcast.com. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. And we're back. Liz, you've got some spoilers for us. Yes, in the form of casting calls for episode 310, Chuck versus the Tic Tac. Um, <laughs> yeah, interesting, huh? I wonder. Hmm. A little microchip mm. in a Tic Tac? I don't know. <laughs> It'll be um, minty fresh. It'll be minty fresh. Um, not medicine-y. Uh, first up <laughs> is a call for Colonel James Keller. This would be a 55-year-old but needs to be able to play younger in flashbacks. So this is a military man for life, yet relatable and casual despite his his rank. And this is a guest starring role. All ethnic. Eth- I can't say that word. <laughs> Ethnicities. Ethnicities. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Ah, so, so the the fact that he has to be able to play younger in flashbacks and he's a military man. Does anybody else suspect this is a Casey episode? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank Could you. very well be. Yeah. Let's see. Next up would be Stanley Fitzroy, who's about mid thirties, shockingly short, but not a little person. Total geek, um, guest star, possibly uh, just a one-day guest star. Um, again, all all ethnicities. Shockingly um, short. Shockingly short, <laughs> but not a little person. Yeah. So some people have suggested Danny Strong, mm-hmm. who was uh, he was in Buffy. He was one of the the terrible trio, or whatever oh, okay. they finally decided their name was. So and uh, that seems to be getting a lot of traction. Well, anyway, he's got to be a total geek, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that should be fun. Unfortunately, uh, Gray is too tall, so <laughs> yeah. way too tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. There's a call for Kathleen McHugh, who is 40 year old, attractive and sexy, strong, independent. Um, think Connie Britton as a prototype. This would also be a guest starring, um, maybe one day guest starring role. Mm-hmm. That is a brilliant um, description. I think Connie Britton is a pro- prototype. Of course, she plays um, Mrs. Coach on Friday Night Lights. Mm-hmm. She is awesome. Mm. So I love it that they're using her as their uh, their reference point for that character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Attractive and sexy 40. Hmm. Well, mm. I'm drawing a blank. Alex Coburn. 25 year old young marine six foot two or six foot four ish right around there um ath- of course who comes to mind when you think when you when you read this athletic build brown hair blue eyes this would be a co-star yeah hmm. who comes who comes from 25 six foot two six four hmm. matt bomer well he's not quite that tall and he's not that tall and he's kind of busy yeah he is kind of busy which um i do want to say white collar is a great show it's excellent isn't it Excellent. Oh, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it's yeah. a fantastic show. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I don't know. Well, um, I I look forward to seeing all these guest stars. It's it's always so much fun to see who they end up casting for these various roles. Yeah, the reality of it versus what we're thinking in our head when we're reading the casting call. Mm. It's, uh, it's always interesting. But Yep. So I guess uh, that's it for this episode. All right. We want to thank everybody for your questions, and please keep them coming. We want to get lots more listener emails in the next few weeks. Absolutely. That's right. And we have, again, we've got some more cool stuff coming up on the podcast, so be sure to subscribe or bookmark. And don't forget to vote for us at podcastalley.com and uh, leave comments on the site and at iTunes. Mm-hmm. So see you next time. All right. See take ya. care.